What's up Yu-Gi-Oh players? You're watching Team APS, Paul here. In today's video, I'm going to share five banned cards that I think could come back with erratas and still be usable but acceptable. Let's get started. So, a bit of background and context as per usual. Sometimes Konami erratas cards. If you don't know what that is, that's when Konami changes a card's text. Usually the effect, but sometimes the name. Um, oftentimes to correct something, or sometimes to slightly better balance the card. Now the thing about erratas, at least of that nature, is that they're usually pretty controversial. A lot of people prefer the card's original effects, their original text. Um, the ban-worthy text, so to speak, because it means that, you know, the card sort of loses its original feel and, you know, sort of power, because no one wants to play a toned-down version of a banned card if it's still kind of going by the same name. Like, a lot of people think, why not just make a new card that's a more balanced version of it? But anywho, I think that these are some cards from the ban list that could be slightly errated and could come back and still be playable. I don't think that it would lose the spirit of the original card, but uh, we'll see what you guys think at the end, so yeah. Here. The first is Rescue Cat. Uh, you guys can probably guess why I like this. I'm an ex saber player, but anywho, uh, yeah, Rescue Cat, you tribute it off, and you get to summon two level three beast monsters from your deck, and they're destroyed during the end phase. Obviously, there's some big problems here. There are a lot of abusable level three beast monsters, you know, tuners and things that float and stuff like that. Um, just for a bit of historical context, you know, Rescue Cat has had an entire deck actually, you know, based off of it, so Cat Synchro, so, um, and X Sabres to a degree, so, glad, god, a lot of decks used it, actually, yeah, but, um, so the thing with Rescue Cat is, obviously, the big problem comes to the fact that it's free advantage, and maybe the bigger problem is really that it can be used multiple times per turn, so in today's metagame of, you know, lots of revival cards, soul charge, and all these other things, you know, you could just use Rescue Cat, stack it off and get its effect, and then like just revive it instantly with one of the bazillion draw cards we've got, and then just kind of do it again. So, um, yeah, I definitely think that it's pretty understandable that it's banned, but I think that it could come back with the errata of not being once per turn. So this would still allow you to start off a lot of big combo plays, but you wouldn't be able to revive it the same turn and abuse its effect again. Now don't get me wrong, I still think it would be a very powerful card, but given, you know, power creep and things like that, I think that the game has moved to the point where just the idea of a instant, you know, plus one from the deck even isn't really foreign. I mean, you know, we've had tour guide for a long, long time since then, and we've currently got, you know, Speedroid Terra Top and its shenanigans. And yes, I agree, there are people who think that that card should go to one, but still, I mean, like, we're no strangers to the idea of kind of an instant rank three Xyz play or sort of an instant synchro play. So I don't think the Rescue Cat would be, you know, anything really different there. Um, it's actually a level four monster, so like there is a little bit of synergy with some other cards and it's like an Earth Beast. Off the top of my head, I mean, I feel like uh, it's not like instantly searchable by anything, so I mean, I don't think that'd be a problem. And, you know, because it's, I, I, when I say remove from the ban list, I don't mean come to three, I think it'd be like, you know, Rescue Cat coming to one, so. I don't really think that it would be heavily abused. I think it would be fun to play around with. I think that with just the once per turn thing, it would still feel like Rescue Cat. And I mean, honestly, if they wanted to go the extra mile, they could even make it banish itself and be once per turn. So that way it's like that much harder to get it back. Uh, that would still mean that maybe something like Levier could abuse it, but you know, that's the case with a lot of cards. So um, I think either of those, or definitely the once per turn part, but either, you know, once per turn or once per turn and getting banished, would make this card, you know, totally <laughs> awesome, totally viable, but still rescue cat, you know what I mean? Next is Mind Master. So this is the level one psychic tuner that you can use, pay 800 life points and you tribute a monster and summon a psychic from your deck, something along those lines, right? But um, obviously there are some reasons why this was a problem. There was kind of that psychic deck that just thinned through the entire deck and ended with a field of like, Maturia Beast and Barkeon and Stardust and stuff, and that was pretty crazy. It was all off of like the one Mind Master. And you know, obviously, if you have that one um, field spell, like Brain Research Lab, you don't even have to pay the life points to activate the effect, although that part wasn't really that much of a problem. It was just kind of the whole no limit to the amount of times you could do it, getting free monsters, getting free floats, making big fields. Um, again, this is another once per turn thing. I think that if this card was once per turn, it would. 
Actually, I mean, I gotta say, I think that once per turn, it might actually just not be used a whole lot because it's not like it's gonna last more than a turn anyway. But the fact of the matter is, you know, it's still, you could still get it with emergency teleport, and I think that's really good. Um, an emergency teleport is a one, so I mean, no one can say that that would be unfair. And also, you know, you could still get any like, low level psychic monster from your deck, and so that's that alone, I think like it would be pretty balanced. Psychic decks could still make use of it. I mean, you know, when you think about it, like psychic decks in general already aren't really playable, so like, eh. I mean, I get that maybe some people might be worried that like maybe like Cosmos could tech it in. Like, you know, sort of shuffle out any monster for a, a low level pilot. But I mean, like, is that really a problem? I mean, like they reach those cards pretty easily on their own, so. I think it'd be pretty fun. I mean, you know, I almost want to say maybe like up to twice per turn because there are several cards that have that. But yeah, definitely, you know, I don't think that Mindmaster coming back to one with a once per turn or maybe a twice per turn clause would be unreasonable. Now, yo, you guys can prove me wrong in the comments and say this is some broken combo I can do. But generally speaking, I think that it would be fine. Next is a similar one, Substitute. Um, so same basic thing really, uh, tribute a monster and you summon a frog from your deck, but, um, you know, it could tribute anything, I know, it was, and it didn't have any life point costs either, so obviously, like, that could be a problem, I mean, you can literally, like, if you just use scapegoat or something the turn before, like, you could use substitute and tribute all those goats for, like, a bunch of frogs, and tribute all those frogs for a bunch more frogs, and tribute all those frogs for even more frogs, and that will get crazy, and we already know that, like, Totally Awesome is a thing, and substitute like Mind Master, it can be summoned with, like, one for one. So, uh, I see where that can get crazy. But again, a once per turn clause would mean poof, like instant balance. It just kind of makes you think maybe Konami wasn't, like this is kind of pre once per turn days, because a lot of the cards released in this time period of like, you know, Mind Master and Substitute were, I think, kind of like Lone Fire Blossom, where it's, they just didn't really see that not once per turn thing being a problem, but then as Synchros and Xyz came out and stuff like that, it just kind of got worse. But um, Substitute is definitely one that, I mean, at once per turn, maybe Frog Dex wouldn't even use it, but I mean, I think that they could still make decent use of it. It's level one, so it's not as usable with like Xyz, so it wouldn't be able to make Totally Awesome itself. So, so I mean, like it wouldn't be like a one card, maybe Totally Awesome. So it, even in that sense, it's not that broken, so. I think that it could definitely show up again, and a dedicated frog deck could make some use of it. Next one is a Synchro, Bryonic. Um, and again, you guys have probably caught on by now, just adding a once per turn, I think, would perfectly really balance this card. I mean, people worry about things like cards that can get looped, and cards that can, you know, be reused, and all of that, and like, you know, the idea of Bryonic bouncing an entire field of Xyz monsters or Synchros or something. But at once per turn, you could still use those combos, you just couldn't abuse those combos. So like, you know, the idea of maybe bouncing a Fiendish Chain to reuse next turn wouldn't be a big deal, or a Call of the Haunted, or, you know, any card like that, the Tinky or something. I mean, we already have cards like Constellar Pleiades or um, Ptolemy and stuff that can like do those types of things in those decks. I think that at once per turn, Bronic wouldn't be as much of a threat, but it would still be a worthwhile level 6 Synchro to include in a deck that can make level 6 Synchros, and there are several that can, and just don't really have a good one, because right now, we're kind of just stuck with, you know, Goyo Guardian, who's kind of power crept out in a lot of ways, um, uh, well, like Stardust Charge Warrior, whatever it's called, it's like, okay, um, Orient Dragon never really caught on, and like, if your deck can make maybe Naturia Beast or something, you know, those are good, but I think Bryonic would become a really easy staple to include in many decks. It could just be an instant kind of out, you know, you discard a card and you can out something. Obviously, Mermels would love for this card to be back, and I know that that could make them a lot scarier, but, you know, like, Mermels aren't, like, really winning anything. They're still, at the end of the day, just a rogue deck, and this wouldn't change that very much, uh, especially if it is once per turn. So, yeah, I definitely think it could just be a slight combo extension for them, if nothing else. Um, Nothing crazy, it doesn't sound like it's unfair. I think that it would still have the spirit of Bryonic. Um, so like many of the other cards on the list, I don't think that like it wouldn't feel like the same card. It's not like they're saying, you know, it can only be summoned with water monsters and you banish a card to target a card and it gets bounced to the end of the third end phase after it, you know, it's nothing crazy. So I definitely think that a once per turn clause could easily balance Bryonic. And the last card is Witch of the Black Forest. Uh, so a little bit of context on Witch of the Black Forest and Sangin. Uh, 
Sangin actually recent, they're both banned, but Sangin recently got Narada. If you bought, I think it was like one of those recent duelist packs or something, reprinted Sangin and it's errata basically meant that you couldn't use a card that you searched that turn with it, and it's also like once per turn. Well, um, I think the Witch of the Black Forest with the same errata um, would be totally allowed to be at one. Uh, basically the idea of you can search a monster with 1500 or less defense instead of attack like Sangin, and you can't use that monster the turn that you know you search it, so obviously like no instant abuse, and of course it would be once per turn, so like if it, if like witch gets revived then uh you couldn't like use it again plus since it's presumed that sangin will probably be coming back on a ban list very soon it'd be awesome to see witch of the black forest back so we can finally make sandwich again Woo! um so yeah i do think that witch of the black forest could be fine now, i know a lot of people will argue oh but it can search all these powerful boss monsters who cares though i mean you know when i think about it like Sangin can search a lot of great stuff, and Witch can too, but those cards are slow. And this format, um, just sort of this era of Yu-Gi-Oh, of speed and consistency, and like where decks just get to their plays fast, the idea of kind of having to just set like a Witch of the Black Forest wouldn't really, I mean, you know, like they're almost losing a turn, a turn of tempo and advantage and really kind of like speed just to kind of search one card. Like, eh. Setting in general has always been crept out in Yu-Gi-Oh, like setting monsters. So, I think that it would honestly be like totally fine. I mean, you know, I'm willing to give it a try. I think it would be really cool. Um, plus, I mean, you can't even use the card the turn you search it. So, I mean, it's that is an extra layer of like kind of molasses to the card effect. So, bringing it back to one, I don't think would be a problem. Now, before you guys complain, I did think about Elemental Hero Stratos. I did consider him for this video. I want to free him as much as you guys do. Actually, it's probably a lie, I don't really care. But, um, I did think about him. The thing is, it's actually really tough to rebalance Stratos without losing what the original card is, and that was the goal of this video, was to kind of like, try to rebalance these cards and in a way that they could come back to one and exist and still kind of feel like their former selves. But it's hard because like you can make Stratos once per turn, but generally speaking, Stratos was only used once per turn. I mean, like there were some exploits that could use it more and more times, but I think that just a once per turn clause would still make it a little too powerful. And I don't want to get rid of the second effect, like the spell and trap popping effect, because like I mean, obviously that's a part of the sort of essence of the card. And the searching thing, like maybe you could add something similar to the Sangin clause that it got. I don't really know, so if you guys have ideas of how to balance Stratos so that it could be brought back, please share them in the comments, I would actually love to know. But that concludes the video, that's five banned cards that I think could come back with Erratas and not completely piss off the player base. Uh, you guys can disagree with me or tell me what you think, you know, be respectful as usual in the comments and get harsh down there. Um, yeah, but there are others that I could have talked about, there are plenty of monsters in the ban list, um, Tribe Infecting Virus is one that I thought about, for example. I didn't do too many spells and traps because I may have mentioned this earlier, but they're harder actually to balance without losing the spirit of the original effect because we've seen happen with, you know, the Crush Guard virus and Ring of Destruction. So, uh, yeah, you guys can think about that, kind of brainstorm, leave cool comments about it. Um, anyway, that's the video. Like if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you loved it, and I'll have more Yu-Gi-Oh! videos for you guys this week as per usual. And we've got one last theme duel coming up, and um, we're giving away a box from these guys of Invasion Vengeance. The giveaway ends very soon, so be sure to enter it. Information in the description. I think that's all I had to say, so I will catch you guys in the next one. Later.